my lane fast, call it high speed I've been working hard, yeah, I've been working nightly If you think you'll win, ha, not fucking likely I be taking shots, yeah, cold-blooded, icy Watching numbers grow is what I call sightseeing In the front row, run it up when they hype me The following grows, they know how to ignite me Call me CEO, I've been running shit right, see All right, welcome to the 2022 Fantasy Six Pack Fantasy Football Team Previews. We're going to be covering the Cincinnati Bengals, and with me doing that is Dylan Clemens. Let's just jump right into it, and we're going to start with our quarterbacks. Uh, Joe Burrow, who led his Cincinnati Bengals to the Super Bowl appearance last year. Uh a little bit unexpected, you know, coming off the uh, the pretty massive injury in his rookie season. Um, but, you know, had a very, very good season. Uh, obviously, he got, you know, a lot of weapons there for him. Currently being drafted as QB6. Um, I mean, he is, – is that is that something that, that uh, you agree with or is that a little overvalued in your book? I think you might be drafting him at his ceiling if you're drafting him there. Last year, he finished uh, with he finished ninth with uh, fantasy points per game with nineteen point seven. Um, he doesn't run a lot, especially since the knee injury. Is he ahead or behind Kyler Joe in ETR? Behind? For me, he's behind. Uh, okay. I don't I think, I believe have the EC. I did. Where did it go? <laughs> a lot of windows up right now. Uh, um, I do have it somewhere, but yeah, it's uh, yeah. I, I I have him currently behind him in my rankings. I just think by that's w- right. And it, uh, the offensive line's revamped, but the Bengals, believe it or not, were actually a run first team last year. Like Joe Mixon had two hundred and ninety two carries, which was third in the NFL. So they yeah. actually they kind of want to come out and uh, and run it a lot. But uh, what are you thinking? Yeah, you know, I know he had the good year. You know, everybody's expecting, you know, obviously really good things with Jamar Chase and obviously Higgins, and they've got Boyd there still, who is, you know, a really good third receiver, yeah. honestly. Um, to me, it's, you know, it's a little. I, I get it. It's a, it's a little rich. I mean, it's where I've got him ranked, honestly, myself. Um, but I'm not sure I feel comfortable drafting him there. I kind of like, uh, you know, if I miss on the top guys, which I probably will because I don't usually draft quarterback early. Sure, um, I, I'd probably, I'd probably wait and, and go get somebody behind him. Go get a, uh, you know, go get a Jalen hurts. If he drops a little bit, you know, you might be, you might be good with a Tom Brady. Aaron Rodgers is going kind of late, right? Who, you know, who knows what's going to happen with him and, and, a, and a, without, you know, his, his guys, Matthew Stafford's going really late, which is crazy. He was like that's, QB five last year. That's <laughs> like, what I was thinking. Is there really that big of a difference between Burrow and Brady or even like he said, Burrow and Stafford? I don't really think so. Yeah. I, I don't think so either. And so like when you get to, when you get to kind of the more pass, uh, more pass happy instead of the run happy quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not going to pay the elite price for that because I think the, f- the floor for them drops so much more to where, you know, that's why Lamar and even Herbert to some degree and Allen obviously, and, and Kyler Murray, like it hurts, like their floors are so much higher because, they're going to run the ball a ton, and that's just going to carry them. Uh, once you start getting the guys who are going to, you know, are more pocket passers, uh, like a Burrow, and I know he runs a little bit, but as you said, not nearly as much as a whole, you know, all these other guys. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just paying that premium is is hard. It really is, and and you know, that's why people aren't paying for Stafford to repeat, right? Because he threw forty one touchdowns. <laughs> Why are we paying it for Burrow? He threw thirty four. <laughs> right. Um, so that's that. Just yeah, I, I'm in total agreement with you there. And uh, so let, let's move on here to those running backs. And and you mentioned Joe Mixon. He had a bit of a career year, <laughs> to say yeah, the least. Man. Um, he was. I I have been. I was off the Joe Mixon train for quite some time. Uh, mm-hmm. I, yeah, he just. 
always seemed to be banged up. Even if he played, he wasn't efficient. Um, last year was just a total different ball game, especially in the first part of the season. Right, started trickling down later. You know, later on in the season, it, 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 he didn't finish strong. Yeah, that's he started for sure. to get he started to get banged up again, battling a little bit. Yeah, from finished. week thirteen on, he was not efficient. He averaged well under four yards a carry. Uh, but before that, he was a monster. I mean, there was a f- few weeks in a row there where he scored two touchdowns each week. <laughs> yeah. So that was pretty nice. You know, what's your thought on his his ranking here of overall eight RB seven? Is that is that sounding about right for you, or are you not willing to pay that price for him off of like clearly his best year? I think I'm gonna have a lot of Joe Mixon shares, man. I really do. I uh. I have no problem taking him at the back end of the first round. So, uh, like I said, the volume's there, the 292 carries last year. The only thing that scares me a little bit is he doesn't see a ton of work in the passing game. Uh, Only 45-ish targets, I think, which was 28th out of running backs in the NFL, so that's not ideal either. But uh, I do think he has top five running back upside, that's for sure. Top five? Yeah. Yeah. I think the upsides there, again, I just, I don't know. Maybe I just got too burned by him in the past. I mean, he, I just, he's also, uh, he is going to regress a little bit, too, on the touchdowns. He had 16 total touchdowns. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I do I do think that they could, and, and you saw this, right? You, it wasn't just that, um, you know, Burrow, or sorry, it wasn't just that Mixon was like awesome, right? It was that he was being super heavily used early on in the season. And the reason for it was they were trying to bring back Burrow slowly and get him more That's comfortable man. again. You saw like as the season progressed, his like usage get less and less and less. And that's when Burrow started going up, right? They went in the opposite directions, mm-hmm. right? And so I guess maybe that's one thing we can think about with Burroughs, you know, ranking to where like, okay, so if they expect that more of that, right, what we saw at the end of the season and even throughout the playoffs, um, then maybe that it takes into account why Burrow is so high, but it doesn't really take into account why Joe Mixon's still so high. Yeah. <laughs> um, sure. So maybe like it's a, kind of playing devil's advocate here, like I think I am actually off of Joe Mixon because I do worry that maybe – they aren't going to run him as much as they did. I mean, if you look at years past with him, um, he wasn't being used that, not that heavily. Uh, The last time was in 2019 that he saw that kind of usage, Um, but he didn't score as many touchdowns. So, you know, again, he's still like, he's still only averaged 4.1 yards per carry. That's that's not, that's not fantastic. He just scored a lot. (laughs) Yeah, he really did. He just scored a lot. Um, so that's where I'm kind of like, eh, are we buying the, are we buying the touchdowns? That's, that's hard to, it's hard to predict every year. So, um, moving over here to the receivers. And this is, like I said, a really good core guys here. Jamar chase obviously is the man overall ninth wide receiver two. Ooh. T Higgins, 28th overall, uh, wide receiver 10. And you got Tyler Boyd falling way down the list at 154 and 55, the rest of the guys probably not really relevant. Here's my thoughts here, man. You know, it, I think it really the debate comes down to Chase and Higgins, right? So we know Chase was really, really good. Started off on fire, um, kind of mixed in good and bad games. Probably like the the last half of the the season, I'd say. Um, had that amazing Week 17 Finals game for everybody. But, you know, if you look at it, I mean, it was like good, good, bad, good, good, bad, good, bad, good, bad, good, bad, good, bad, really good, and then bad. (laughs) So, like, T. Higgins, though, on the other hand, if you look at it, he finished the season better than the Chase. Down the stretch, he was the more consistent player. So, which one are you buying and why? I think I'm going Higgins. I think that the value is better. And just looking back at Jamar Chase's stat line, like you were saying, man, there's some crazy things if you look deep into it. Like there's one, uh, he caught more touchdowns, Joe, than he had red zone targets last year. <laughs> he just caught all the deep balls, man. It was yeah, nuts. It really, it really was crazy. So I would like to think there's going to be, there has to be some sort of regression there for 
chase. Yes, absolutely. Um, I think Garrett Ball from Fantasy Six Pack had a great thread today about guys that are like a little overpriced or underpriced and why are the guys who are going to regress, right? And, mm-hmm. you know, just regress to the mean is what we mean, not regress bad or regress, you know, whatever. Sure. But, and so he said, Jamar Chase is one of them that's going to regress to the mean because he's like over his touchdowns was over the expected by like three and a half mm-hmm. or something, something like that. Oh, and it could even means. honestly even be more. So, um, yeah, the great, great stat line there by Garrett. So uh, go ahead and check him out on, on Twitter. Uh, yeah, I, I'm with you on Higgins. I do want a piece of this passing offense, so if I can yeah, somehow definitely. get it, I just think it's going to be valuable. But I think Higgins is the guy you can get him, you know, a round and a half later. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you can, if you're, if you've got one of those early first round picks, right, you can get your, your stud running back, right, come back and double tap receiver, and you could possibly get Higgins. And I mm-hmm. think that's the way you want to go. You know, the back end of the first round, I don't think. I don't think I'm going to spend up on Chase there. I just, I'm just like deathly afraid that he's just going to hit a, have a huge sophomore slump. I'm not really sure why. I think mm-hmm. that um, just because we saw it. I mean, like week 15 last year, like 0. 0.3 points. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah. Five and a half, a couple weeks before that, 3.9, 2.6 in the last week of the season. I don't know. Maybe they didn't play everybody. I kind of forget. But um, it's just, that's scary to look at. Yeah. You know, that's like Amari Cooper type level of yeah, inconsistency, man. Is. So that that's where I get afraid with guys like that. So let's finish off here with our tight ends and uh, they bring it in, Mr. Hayden Hurst. <laughs> I mean, are, are we buying into Hayden Hurst hype again? I don't think we can, right? No, I'm just going <laughs> to end it there. We're done. Uh-huh. Hayden Hurst. No, you're not. You're not fooling me again, man. I, yeah, I bought into you two years ago in Atlanta. <laughs> not doing it again. So. All right, that's it for the Cincinnati Bengals. want to thank you all for tuning in and watching. Hit that subscribe button. Leave those comments. We appreciate it. And check out some more of our team previews over here on the Fantasy Six Pack channel. See ya.